You know, Aaron, that, that Chess Peak tournament was, was one of my favorite. Uh, I'm sure it was one of your favorites too, but it was one of my favorites to watch. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, that's that's the year that earned you this hog snatcher name uh, that this spinnerbait line bears, right? A new Picasso hog snatcher spinnerbaits. Can yep. you tell us about those? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, well, I, I get a lot of questions. This is one right here. We're going to have this, you know, that's probably like a traditional willow will and We had a lot of conversations about the back blade size. And I'm really into like keeping extra blades in my boat, changing them out. And if you go with this combination, it makes a really good all-around spinnerbait. This is a 3 8 tungsten. But the cool thing is, all you gotta do if you want to speed it up or get a little deeper is just change this back blade to the same size as that front blade. Then you got something you can fish a lot quicker, a little bit deeper, maybe the bait smaller. I do a lot of stuff like that. But with this combination, you can kind of you have two major things you can do with one spinnerbait. Uh, I do get a lot of questions too about the tungsten. What what makes tungsten better? You know, obviously it's gonna be half the size of lead. Uh, so uh, in a spinnerbait, and I fish a spinnerbait, I, mean, I got like second place last year fishing the prototype in the spinnerbait in one of the cup events, uh, fishing shallow grass. I was in seven, eight feet of water and real thick grass. And in this head design, and I was fishing a half ounce, which is about what this one is. And it, you know, it's like a bullet shape, you know, worm head shape. It, at that I found was like the best shape for splitting the grass. And I was throwing like a traditional Picasso spinnerbait in the grass and I was hanging up a lot in the grass and luckily I had time to kind of regroup them. Like, I must have put one of these prototypes on. It was big and bulky, but it came to the grass twice as good as any spinnerbait I've ever thrown. So we kept that shape, put some eyeballs on it, and uh, that's another thing I'm showing you right here. I'm actually shaking a little bit. I try not to shake. I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> it, might be, it might be some of the uh, stuff I've been through. But uh, it's like an Indiana blade, but it's not like a traditional Indiana blade. It's actually me and Terry and uh, shaking. And we actually went over the the blade and made it different. He, he's actually customizing those blades to make them thump different. And uh, it's amazing that just a little bit of tweaks you do here and there to them, how much, like, what you can do to it. And I've, I've been tweaking them for a long time, like spinnerbait blades. And I'm going to get you another one right here. I'm already trying, I'm trying to remember the names. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a nighttime silver Colorado okay, deal, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Terry and Dan. They're watching me. I'm probably going to get fired. This is like a... <laughs> the the name is not a, important. The design is what matters. This is a Colorado... We'll find It's going to be easy. You guys, yeah. you guys do a great job of showing stuff. This is a blade that we kind of did the same thing with at Indiana. You can tell it looks a little different. But this mm -hmm. blade is... If you guys haven't... This is a new blade, I think, pretty much with Costa. There might be another one out there. But right now, that's we're doing that. And that's like a nighttime version. But we also have a few nighttime versions and also some daytime versions of it. This is going to be called the Rumbler Blade yeah, Spinner Rate. Yeah. It's, a, it's a hot extension series. And it, it's, it, I've used it. I haven't had a, whole, a lot of chances to use it, but the blade is phenomenal. And uh, I did have my buddy fish it the other day at uh, the Kusa. He did catch a five pound spot on it. But it's a Great, it has a great feel. It's unbelievable. It, nothing like a Colorado. So that's something that's new. It's exciting. And uh, the spinner baits are going to be from uh, three eighths, uh, half, uh, kind of five eighths, three quarters. And right now I'm working on getting to, to a one ounce. And uh, I guess what I, was, I got away from was the, I guess, advantages of tungsten besides being half the size is I've been using it for like two years now a lot. And and I throw a lot of spinnerbait. It's one of my favorite lures to throw for bass. And it just has a better feel to it. I don't know if it's crisper, but it also, you can get the bait, like a better profile with with the trailer on it, with the blade combinations. Like everything you do with the tungsten, like if you use like a one ounce or three quarter ounce, I have someone ounces. I'll get, try to get you guys some. Yeah. <laughs> right now not. You've got my address. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> bigger is going to be the one that's going to be really bad. Yeah. Um, but you can kind of, combo a, a trailer and skirt and everything with that tungsten and it gets down so much quicker so if you're fishing ledges or if you're trying to fish fish even like a deep grass line like 12 14 feet you take like a half ounce size instead of having to go like a three quarter or one ounce but you can throw like a half ounce you know same kind of looking package as the bigger one but much lighter so a lot easier to throw and a lot more efficient and also the invisiwire uh is like a brown colored wire which really does kind of disappear in the water really well compared to any wire I've ever thrown and it's also got some crazy stuff in it so it's very very strong it also doesn't break uh, hardly ever break a 
one of the cost of spinner baits with invis wire on it. And uh, we played with the wire size a lot. We went kind of in between real heavy and light. So this is going to be a durable spinner bait. So I'm, you know, I don't want to tell you how many, but, you know, I usually get at least 50 to 100 fish at one spinner bait at one of these. Yeah, that's Typically. huge with those tucks and baits. Sorry, go ahead. That's not, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that's not catching, you know, a bunch of four and five pounders. That's catching, you know, two, three, you know, solid fish. I usually get at least 50 at one of these spinner baits. That's something to say about a spinner bait because that's unusual. <laughs> But, yeah, the very first spinner that came out, those those old the the tungsten switch we had, they were great baits, but you catch a few fish and they would break off. So that's a be able right. to have that same quality of the the tungsten and all and all the key attributes, but still be able to last. That makes it huge. Yeah, yeah, Aaron, I've got a question about the Rumbler spinner bait. Is that is that something you're just using as a nighttime spinner bait, or are there other applications for that? No, there's been it's uh, there's way more applications. That's why I, had, I haven't had a chance to play with it that much yet. Just just like a, probably like three weeks ago, I just got some recently. But it's the feel of this blade is phenomenal. I can't it's it's I can't it's nothing like I've ever felt before. It's really fast. It puts off a really good. You can tell the vibe. I mean, I fished live bait. I guided live bait growing up in California. I fished saltwater, you know, growing up. You kind of tell when you put a nice green bait on there how it feels. And this one's got that kind of kick to it. And I was. And my, like I said, my friend caught the only fish after we, we fished a little bit longer. He caught a five pound spot on it, but it's a, it was getting dust. But they, like I said, they have some daytime versions too. They're going to have like shad whites and probably come out with white chartreuse, good bright colors. But I think a lot of people about spinnerbaits I've found over the years is even like a Colorado spinnerbait at the river lakes has been really effective for a lot of guys like in chartreuse and white, just like you would think something the complete opposite actually is really effective. So. But the vibe this thing puts out, it's going to be interesting, you know, with guys, guys throwing it how they do on it. So it really is a lifelike feel. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, before we move away from spinnerbaits, mm -hmm. uh, we do have a fan question for you here, Aaron. From Nuno Pagan, uh, trailer hook for spinnerbait, yes or no? Or does it vary by situation? Well, I actually am designing a spinnerbait hook right now. It's actually out in the market, I think. You could think you guys have some. Uh, definitely a yay and definitely a nay sometimes. Uh, like somewhere where I, where I just came from, like the Great Lakes, and you throw in a spinnerbait and like sparse grass, definitely throws. I always throw a, a trailer hook if you're fishing. You know, the only time I don't really throw one is if I'm coming over a lot of timber, coming through a lot of sticks and like really heavy vegetation. I'll, and that's why another cool thing that question kind of remind me of, which I think is really important, which I which a lot of spinner, spinnerbait companies lack, and that's what brings me to this fact right here is the cost. We put a big hook in these spinnerbaits. Yeah. But it's a big short hook. And I've always found a big short hook. I've always wanted big short hooks in my spinnerbaits because, because if you don't fish a trailer hook, you got a bigger bite. So you have a better chance. Of, and it comes to a debris really good. It's behind the wire, but when a fish eats it, you have better hookups. But if you put a trailer hook on this one, it's not going to be way back here like a long hook would be. So you get the short hook with a trailer hook so it keeps it still compact in the skirt line. So we did all the thinking on that. And I think we came out with a really killer product. You know, on that same train of thought with the trailers, and I know you have the, the the bait keeper on there. Do you, do you when do you use a uh, a trailer, a bait trailer, or, or what? Do you, and what do you use when you're doing that? Uh, you mean as far as soft plastic? Yeah, or yeah. The, I got I got various. I mean, everything from like a Zoom flute to, you know, I got like the little spankies, and I mean, I got lots of different ones I throw. And I uh, honestly, I probably have five different trailers in my tackle box even split tails and stuff it's kind of i don't know it's it's that would be like a, we'd, we'd be here for a while <laughs> yeah i but i would love I'm, to dive down I'll, that rabbit hole with aaron uh aaron what about not using a trailer hook on a spinnerbait or do you all or i'm sorry a trailer a soft plastic trailer or do you always put a soft right, plastic trailer? Uh, that's a good question because i've learned over the years and i've heard over the years that when i was young that from like really good fishermen d thomas type guys uh, Mike Full said they, they always said a trailer. I've heard, I remember he hearing one of them say, you know, a trailer helps us fish and hail that bait. It's probably D. Thomas, I think. You know, he said stuff like that to me a lot. He's a really cool guy and the flipping king. He used to tell me stuff like that. I remember him saying that and it kind of stuck in my head. And I kind of, he started thinking, well, maybe it does. Cause you got a bear hook, you know, you got a bear hook with, and the fish has got suction, you know, for us. He's going to pull on that hook and he's got nothing to really pull except for a skirt, which is not much. So, I normally throw some kind of plastic on there just because it gives it more body, gives it more volume. So when the fish goes and inhale the bait, 
he's got more something more solid to pull into his mouth. That's interesting. So, so it's a suction issue. That's something yeah. I've never thought about with baits in general. Yeah. And of course, it's Mr. Aaron Martin. Yeah, that, there, there I'm gonna put times, that in my head. There are times when I do because because that brings me to another thing. That I use you guys probably know me well enough that you know I've made my own skirts for years for like twenty plus years. Uh, I use all Picasso skirts now, and and their skirts are, are really, really cool. And you can fish their skirts without anything. Uh, you know, if I'm fishing deep, I'm trying to get maximum depth of a spinnerbait. A lot of times I will go without without a, a, a plastic on it just to get the extra depth out of it. Because the plastic's going to make it more, it's going to add buoyancy to it or make it lift a little more than it would without it. Sure. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, well, that's a whole new line uh, of Aaron Martin's signature spinner baits from Picasso. Uh, all kinds of good options to fit all kinds of uh, uh, situations there, Corey, and, and some really detailed uh, 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 knowledge there coming from yeah. Aaron Martin's on that stuff. Uh, I believe all of those are available for pre-order on the site right now. They are right, all available for pre-order right now, so make sure you check those guys out. And again, it's you're getting a bait that's been fine-tuned by the, by the man himself, so you know it's going to be uh, quality and uh, catch a lot of fish and be easy to throw.